Right now on Denver 7 News at 5 a.m., Colorado considering a change today to a famous landmark, the painful history behind Mount Evans' current namesake, prompting the push for change. Plus, more than just beautiful wilderness, we also have bustling town centers and access to all the services you may need. Hmm. Comedian Amy Schumer is calling attention to Colorado's legal abortion services. The new comedy sketch now sparking response this morning from our state tourism office. The Secretary of State's office owning up to a mistake. The mailer 30,000 Coloradans received encouraging them to do something they're not allowed to do. And the Colorado Rockies owner is apologizing to fans what he wrote in a letter to season ticket holders mm. about the team's four year playoff drought. Yeah, some things didn't quite pan out this season. 43 <laughs> games out of first place. Ooh. It was rough. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for joining us on this Tuesday. I'm Brian Sanders. I'm Nicole Brady. Uh, Lisa, you got that personal letter as a season ticket holder. Huh? I did, yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it was kind of interesting. I mean, reading through it. So yeah, wait for that story. It was mm -hmm. uh, interesting what they said. Uh, we've got, at this point, uh, a pretty nice start to our day. You're gonna find dry conditions early on, low to mid 50s here, Denver right around 55 to even near 60 degrees in a few neighborhoods. So a pretty nice exercise forecast. We're gonna get into the low 70s by noon. It's gonna be another pretty warm day. We're Typically upper 60s this time of year, but you're going to see that by about 10 to 11 o'clock. So we'll be again about some five, seven degrees above normal today. Denver a high of 76, Evergreen 64, Estes Park right around 60, mid to upper 70s near Platteville and Keensburg. Uh, coming up here in just a few minutes, there will be a chance for some showers here along the I-25 corridor. That also combined with some gustier winds means we have actually some high fire danger across parts of northeastern Colorado. Details coming up. And right now we have uh, still overnight construction here and there up to the north. If you hear that I-25 up near Weld County Road 34 is closed. It's not just north of Longmont heading up to Mead and Bertha. That looks wide open for us on the north and southbound side. You see some increased traffic up there, but overall speed still in this high 60s for the most part in the construction zone. Keep it down into the 50s. Take a look at the drive that we have out to the east side where we still have this overnight construction that's lingering on eastbound I-70 as well as northbound 225 to go over here to Chambers. It's a really tricky merge in there anyway. They've been doing paving on both sides of I-70 the last several weeks and this is causing those delays right now and it's also affecting a little bit 225. Also still seeing a bit of a delay out here on I-70 for the paving that's continuing between basically Pecos Federal over by Lakeside, so that's a couple extra minutes for you folks out of the west side, at least for right now. Well, one of Colorado's most popular 14ers could soon have a new name. Mount Evans, as we know it, will go before a state board today. Denver 7's Brandon Richard is live with the historical reasons behind this push to change one of our most visible mountains. Well, Brian, the Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes, along with others, have been pushing for this name change for years. But, you know, changing the name of any landmark is not easy. It's a long process. Well, tonight marks an important milestone in that process. For the first time, the Colorado Geographic Naming Advisory Board will hear the proposal from tribal representatives seeking this name change. Now, Mount Evans is named after Colorado Territorial Governor John Evans. John Evans authorized and was responsible for the Sand Creek Massacre in 1864, one of the worst massacres in history. Hundreds of Cheyenne and Arapaho men, women, and children were murdered. The Cheyenne and Arapaho tribe says someone like Evans should not be honored. We want the mountain changed because when we come to Denver, we don't want to look and see Evans. You know, there's a lot of things that were that were changing, you know, in the country now as far as, as you might say, derogatory names or bad names. And so this would be a good good name to change. The Mizdahet Coalition, which is made up of tribal members and the Wilderness Society, are pushing to rename Mount Evans to Mount Blue Sky. Blue Sky honoring the Arapaho, who were known as the Blue Sky People, and the Cheyenne hold an annual ceremony of renewal of life called Blue Sky. Tonight's meeting starts at 6. Now in March, Clear Creek Commissioner signed off on this name change, but as we said, this is a lengthy process. The governor, as well as federal leaders, must also sign off. Reporting in Denver this morning, Brandon Richard, Denver 7. All right, yeah, it's been a long time coming. Thank you, Brandon. A fake tourism ad for Colorado is getting quite a bit of attention online this morning. Comedian Amy Schumer posted a comedy sketch promoting Colorado's access to legal abortion services. 
Whatever kind of experience you're looking for, you can find it here in Colorado. But we're more than just beautiful wilderness. We also have bustling town centers and access to all the services you may need. Not that you need some big dramatic reason to come to Colorado. No one should have to justify a trip to Colorado. Maybe you just want to do with your own body what you want to do with your own body. <laughs> So the Colorado Tourism Office said it did not provide any information to Schumer's team, work with her in any way on the sketch or endorse it in any way. The sketch will be aired on a new season of Inside Amy Schumer, dropping October 20th on Paramount+. Hmm. Plus. Colorado Secretary of State's office says it sent postcards to about 30,000 people who are not citizens, encouraging them to register to vote. A driver's license database glitch is reportedly to blame. The Secretary of State's office says anyone who is not a citizen and tries to register to vote will not be able to. Eligible voters, meanwhile, in Adams, Arapaho, and Denver counties will use a first-of-its-kind shared ballot box this year. Typically, drop boxes are specific to the county in which the drop box is located. The tri-branded drop box, meanwhile, located at the Martin Luther King Jr. Library in Denver's East Colfax neighborhood, is expected to improve access for voters. Clerks from all three counties said the box will be monitored 24-7 to keep every vote secure. In addition to the governor and Senate races, voters statewide will also be deciding a proposition to regulate psychedelic mushrooms. Ten years after voters supported legalizing cannabis, though, many Coloradans of color still have cannabis convictions on their records. Now supporters of legalizing psychedelic mushrooms think the measure on the November ballot needs to do more to prevent inequitable convictions. One of the sidewares included that there's going to be discounted licensing fees for BIPOC folks. There's a record sealing aspect. However, a record sealing is a petition. You have to petition the district courts. Uh, to do this, it could be denied. Activist Melanie Rose Rogers says automatic expungement would be more equitable. On the flip side, though, Veronica Lightning, House Perez is for Proposition 122. I am of mixed Indigenous ancestry, but I don't speak for Indigenous people. To me, this measure is about personal healing and being able to choose for yourself how you want to heal and whether that is with plant medicine. Some dates to remember as we get closer to Election Day. October 17th, which is next Monday, is the first day ballots for the general election can be mailed out. You should have already received your blue ballot guide. Election Day is November 8th. Polls will be open that day from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Well, we have some good news to share this morning. The Boulder teen we told you about yesterday was found safe in a Thornton home. Chloe Campbell was last seen at a Boulder High School football game back on September 30th. Officials took her to a hospital get, to get checked out. It isn't clear where she had been over the last week and a half or why she was there at a Thornton home. Boulder police say they did not issue an Amber Alert because officers did not believe she was abducted. Well, three people are still in the hospital this morning after a driver ran his truck through a crowd of people in bar, uh, outside a bar in Golden. Uh, one of the men who was hit was killed. According to court documents, there were conversations between some of the victims and suspects about gang affiliations. And later there was a fight in the parking lot at that bar early Sunday morning. Jeff Code deputies don't think the suspects knew any of the victims personally. Denver 7 CB Cotton spoke with Mike Fulcomer. His son Robert was one of the seven people injured in that crash. He's been a manager at the bar for about a year. All he remembers is the fact that he was standing um, and he took one step to one side, he said, and that's when he was hit. We dug into the suspect's records. The driver was on parole at the time of the accident uh, or the crash rather. See that side of the story on Denver7.com. Well, the owner of the Colorado Rockies is not mincing words over the disappointment with the team's record mm -hmm. this year. As we mentioned, 43 games out of first place. In a letter to season ticket holders yesterday, Dick Momford declared the four-year playoff drought not acceptable and that excuses serve no purpose. This season, the Rockies finished at the bottom of the NOS standings for the first time in seven years. Momford says the team is committed to improving in the offseason and highlighted some of the team's young prospects. Lisa, almost a guarantee that opening day will still be a party. Oh, oh yeah, and I'll be there for sure. You're right. Yeah.
Still love my Rockies, but yeah, it'd be nice if we would win, right? Uh, mid to upper 70s, Denver to Greeley. Today it's going to be a nice and warm afternoon, near 80. In fact, especially down across parts of southeastern Colorado. We'll get a little rain developing here uh, late day today. I'll show you the timing of that, plus where we have some pretty high fire danger today coming up. We still have some road work as well, including coming off of southbound I-25 onto eastbound I-70. Now what we're looking at here is this is the eastbound side of I-70, still dealing with some paving right around Pecos and Federal. And you see it looks okay getting to I-25, but that westbound side, that's what you're going to use. Go west for uh, a little bit, go to Pecos, turn around, and then come back east I-70 while that ramp is still closed. We'll take a look at the rest of the overnight construction that's lingering for us on the east side coming up in just a bit. Halloween festivities are being called off at schools around the country, and it's not because of COVID. We'll explain. And what did it take to get this bad boy out here? 35 hours of white knuckle driving. You think driving in a snowstorm is bad? Drive one of these things. <laughs> Look at that thing. How the journey to get this humongous Halloween staple from Minnesota all the way to California paid off for one farmer.